that approach the for each challenge. For each has two parts. In part one, we're asked to create a function for each, which takes an array and a callback and runs the callback on each element of the array. For each does not return anything, and we're asked to not use the native for each or map methods. So we're given the following example below. First, we are initializing the variable alphabet to an empty string. Next, we are initializing the constant letters to an array containing four strings, A, B, C, and D. On the next line, the for each function is invoked, passing in the letters array and a callback function. For each will call the callback function a total of four times, once with each letter in the letters array, appending the given letter to the string stored in alphabet each time. Once for each has finished executing, alphabet will have the value of the string a, B, C, D. So how might we approach this? Well, the prompt asks us to run a callback function on each element of an array. So this is a clue that we will most likely need to iterate through our array somehow. There are many ways to do this, and today we will be using a for loop. So that's exactly what we'll do is our first step, which is to iterate through our array with a for loop. Next, as we're iterating through our array, we need to invoke the past and callback function on the current array element that we're visiting. So for each iteration of our loop, we're in effect invoking the callback with a different value. So for each iteration, we need to invoke the callback function, passing in the current array element. That should accomplish everything we need to do, so let's go ahead and add the code. On line five, we can initialize a for loop using the variable i as a counter. We can start at zero, which will represent the first element in our array, and we'll continue until the last element in our array. Each time, we'll be incrementing i by 1. Next, the callback function that is passed into for each is referenced by the name or the label callback. We can invoke the function stored in callback by adding parentheses. And what do we want to pass to callback? We want to pass in the current array element that's being visited in our loop. And we can do that by referencing the ith index of our array. So as you can see, we will start with the element in the zero index of our array, which is the first element. For each iteration in our loop, i will be incremented. And on line seven, we will be referencing the next element in our array. We will invoke the callback function each time until we have successfully invoked the callback function on every array element. And that's it. If we uncomment line 19, we should see abc log to the console. Part two asks us to rebuild the map function from the previous challenge. This time, instead of using a for loop, you're going to use the for each function we just created. Now, if you recall, the map function takes two arguments, an array and a callback function, and returns a new array containing the results of invoking that callback function on each element in the array that was passed in. Since we know we'll need to create an array, we can do that as our first step. So first, we want to initialize a new array. Next, we will need to use our for each function, which takes in two arguments, an array and a callback function. So our next step will be to call for each with the passed in array and a new function. So what kind of function do we need here in order to achieve the desired functionality? Looking back at the for each function we just created, we know for each will invoke whatever callback function that's passed to it with a single argument, an array element. So we know that this function needs to take an array element. What else? Well, map needs us to invoke the pass and callback function that was passed to it on every array element. For each is invoking our new function for us on line seven, passing in an array element. So we need this function to effectively invoke the passed in callback function that was given to map with the current array element given to us by for each. This will result in a return value, which we need to add to the array that we initialized earlier. So our next step will be to add the return value to our array. And finally, our last step will be to return our array containing the results. That should do it. So let's go ahead and code this one out as well. On line 14, we're going to initialize the constant results to an empty array. Next, since for each is stored in the global memory, we can reference it by its label for each and invoke it with parentheses. It will take in the past an array, which is stored under the label ARR, and a function. This function is going to take in one array element, as we discussed previously, which we can just give it the name element. In the function body itself, we need to invoke the callback function referenced by the label call. We can do that with parentheses, 
and then pass in the element that is given to us as an argument by for each. This will result in a return value that we need to add to our results array, which we can do by calling the push method on results. Finally, for our last step, we need to return results. And that should do it. We are using foreach to apply an anonymous function to each element in an array. The anonymous function, in turn, applies a callback function that was originally passed to map on the current array element and pushes the resulting value to a new array. This continues for every element, yielding a brand new array of the same length that is eventually returned. So if we uncomment our test on line 28, we will see the array 1, 2, 3 log to the console. Thanks for watching.